The Knicks have made it official just moments ago that they are parting ways with Phil Jackson. We are going to cover this story from every possible angle today. But first, let's start with your initial reaction, Will Kane. I don't like it. Um, I don't like it. Look, I don't like it when the mob gets their way. I don't like it when the lemmings take the crowd over the cliff. I mean, listen to Stephen A's rantings. Listen to it. By the way, just wait about five minutes or so. You can probably hear him live. But those are the rantings of an emotional person. You don't make decisions through emotion. You make decisions through reason, through logic. And let me tell you something. Despite what Stephen A. Smith, John Sally, who won two rings with Phil Jackson, I can't wait to hear what you have to say in just a moment, <laughs> two world championships with the man who is being drugged through the mud today, you, John Sally, right. or Max Kellerman, for that matter, that, that have been completely denigrating Phil Jackson over the last several months, let me just tell you something you accomplished. You accomplished nothing today. The Knicks are 0% better today than they were yesterday. You got nothing done. You are not better than you were before this fact. And you took an easy, crowd-pleasing, pitchfork-wielding position to get yourself to this cul-de-sac of nothingness that you're sitting in today. This has done nothing for the Knicks. It has denigrated Phil Jackson, who, by the way, I'm not sitting here suggesting did such a wonderful, great job running the New York Knicks. He doesn't deserve GM of the year. He hasn't made them a championship contender. But if we do this nonsense that somehow he drugged them into the mud and he ruined this franchise, you're living in Never Never Land. Yeah. And you'll continue to be stuck on zero going forward. Let me tell you, it, it got so crazy that my cousin Mike Odom literally texted me at 6.25 in the morning telling me news that I already knew, as if he was given ESPN news. He was happy. He's one of those New Yorkers that will watch a Yankee game over watching anything. I just go to think, my mother used to always want me to play for the Knicks since I'm from New York. I knew that in New York, they will flip on you in a second. Phil Jackson was the savior, the great guy, the guy who won a championship with him. Everybody in the stands, Stephen A is one of those people, they, everybody in the audience thinks they can coach. They think they can general manage. The guys on the paper, in the paper, they literally think that they can put things together because they're sitting back saying it and then they're going to lunch or going to dinner doing something else. It is a hard place to be. It is the focus. We focus in the NBA, we focus here on this network on a team that doesn't win. We talk about the Knicks like they're a winning team. They're not. It's the New York team. They haven't won since 1972. Michael Rappaport proved that. Phil Jackson, given the time, which we talked about yesterday, impatience, people get paid for production. They don't get paid for potential anymore. Uh, the time he was putting things together, what he thought of, I think maybe in this situation, Phil is realizing, you know what, it's not going to get any better. I guess Dolan, even saying in the funny piece I saw in um, Sports Center before, when he said, if it doesn't work, we can blame. To start off something, we're going to put this together, and if it doesn't work, already puts it in a negative tone anyway, that it's not going to work. Uh, two coaches, three years, it's time for Phil to sit back in the sun. It's, he should come back to L.A., uh, consult. Uh, lose some of that belly he gained sitting on his butt here in New York City. Uh, but I don't think that they made their team better. The, the whole idea that literally the media does all the negotiation for the Knicks is another problem for me. But so let me get this straight, John. You, you were in the locker room with this man that won yeah. 11 rings, yeah. two with you. Right. You know how he manages. You know his personality. You know what he can do and what he can be as a leader. Set aside coach. As a leader. Did Phil Jackson, look, by the way, I asked Cassie this before this show started. I said, do we have to say this mutually part ways stuff? Yeah. Like, where do we get this language? Like, Phil Jackson was fired. Right. Are we supposed to pretend otherwise? Well, when you get $60 million in three years and they don't fire you, they go, here's the rest of your money. Well, so Phil was mutual. told, don't come to work tomorrow. <laughs> All right? That's what Phil was told. It's been nice. And, and here's you know a what? parting gift. And don't, Stephen don't A would say, tomorrow. he ain't been at work for three years. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't even show up tomorrow, so well, he was fired. According right. to our Ian Bagley, uh, people have been telling Dolan to, to, to fire Phil right. for quite some time. And here's, so here's my question to you as someone who knows this man in all the ways we just laid out. Did Phil deserve to be fired? 
tick tock tick. This is Milton. <laughs> the camera. Uh, I think I think in this situation, being in the New York, I wouldn't have fired him. I think he's a great guy. But if Phil wasn't coaching, see, if he was coach, president, coach, general manager, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Being general manager and not being allowed to go down there and coach a team and put his energy into those guys directly, uh, no matter what they said, him coaching from the stands. I just think it was time for Phil to move on because it wasn't going to get any better. With Carmelo holding things up in his mind, he wasn't going to be able to put in his offense. Well, Phil didn't move on. The Knicks moved on. Now Phil gets a chance to go sit in Montana, but let's be clear. Yeah. It's James Dolan and the Knicks that moved on from Phil. And we're going to cover this, as you said, Cassidy, every step right. of the way from every angle. But what I want New York Knicks fans to know is I'm not a hater. I'm here for you. And here's what I'm worried about, Nick, New York Knicks fans. You're not one step forward today because the problem, the tumor, the cancer at the heart of the New York Knicks remains.